Facts don't care about your feelings. Facts don't care about your feelings. These are facts. Iran launched a military satellite, followed by Donald Trump tweeting, I'm sitting there tweeting, bing, 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 quote, to shoot down and destroy any and all Iranian gunboats if they harass our ships at sea, end quote. Apparently Trump, John Bolton, and Mike Pompeo are really upset that small Iranian boats will swarm American ships as a prank. Ha! <laughs> Got <he. laughs> Major General... Hussein Salami replied, quote, We have also ordered our military units at sea that if a vessel or military unit of the Navy of the U.S. terrorist military seeks to threaten the security of our civilian ships or combat, combat vessels, they should target that vessel or military unit, end quote. I'm on a boat! I'm on a boat! Speaking of Iran, Ayatollah Khomeini announced plans to prepare islands off the coast of Iran in the Persian Gulf for residential infrastructure. Iran said they plan to do so to maintain security in the region. President Hassan Rouhani said, quote, This gulf's name is the Persian Gulf, not the Gulf of New York or Washington Gulf. The U.S. must stop applying its conspiracy plots against the Iranian nation who has its name on this gulf and has protected it in history, end quote, Rouhani said. That's history right there, you understand? Libyan warlord Khalifa Haftar's military lost important ground in the Libyan Civil War to the Government of National Accord, or GNA. The GNA is supported by the UN and particularly supported by Turkey and Sudan. Haftar is supported by the Sauds, Emiratis, Israelis, and Egypt. The GNA's most recent victories could signal the end of the Libyan Civil War. <laughs> It came as, as a shock to supporters of Haftar, especially the Emiratis. Something that just surprised the whole world. Abu Dhabi released a statement condemning Turkey for using so-called terrorists. Today, uh, there was a terrorist attack, okay? Soldiers, referring to Syrian soldiers fighting for the GNA. Mm -hmm. I'm Syrian. I made the... Uh, I'm made in Syria, and I have to live in Syria and die in Syria. Turkey wasn't happy about the Emirati statement and released their own, accusing the Emiratis of supporting the Somalian ISIS affiliate Al-Shabaab in the Southern Transitional Council, which are the anti-Houthi separatists in Yemen. Turkey's statement continued, quote, The UAE government's ugly and unfounded accusations against Turkey are, in fact, the result of an ulterior motive to hide its own destructive activities. For years, the UAE has provided Puchis in Libya with weapons, military equipment, and mercenaries, end quote. You're right, sweetie. I'm not cute. I'm drop-dead. Gorgeous. The tension between the UAE and Turkey have been boiling since the UAE supported the failed coup attempt against the Turkish government in 2016. Colonel Gaddafi says Libya is prepared for a long war and that the international forces against him will be defeated. He said the international forces are resorting to terroristic means, but the victory will belong to those who hold the Libyan territory. He added that those who come from behind the seas are too cowardly to come onto our land. We are on our land. We won't give up our children's wealth, our oil to the Americans, Britons, French, and to the Christian countries that formed a coalition against us. We will not leave them to enjoy our oil. They have to know that we will fight on a broad front, extending more than 2,000 kilometers. Never ever will you be able to make us surrender. This land will defeat you, inevitably. 
the Iraqi center-right Sunni political party called National Movement for Development and Reform announced it has withdrawn from the government formation process led by Prime Minister-designate Mustafa al kadhimi This further stokes the ethnic tension that was largely created by the U.S. military occupation as the country's Sunni minority, especially in western Iraq, continue to gravitate towards the American, Saudi, and Emirati sphere of influence while the majority of the country remain opposing the U.S. Lovers in love and the others run away. Lover is crying cause the other won't stay. Unknown assailants lobbed an explosive device at a branch of the private bank Franza Bank in the L Lebanese city Sidon. Bomb armed. This attack comes from rising public anger against banks as Lebanon faces its worst economic and financial crisis in decades. On this very night, ten years ago, along the same stretch of road, in a dense fog. Germany declares Hezbollah a terrorist organization, then raids several mosques and homes. After much pressure from the U.S. and Israel to declare Hezbollah a terrorist organization. This is different than most of Europe's and most countries in general stance that Hezbollah is not a terrorist organization. Your campaign of terror, murder, mayhem will not be tolerated any longer. France and Germany feud with Silicon Valley over tracking coronavirus. France and Germany want to use Bluetooth technology to track coronavirus cases. Apple and Google refuse and they cite privacy concerns as the reason. However, the more likely, likely reason is that Apple and Google are developing their own proprietary software that they want to sell to Europe instead of using Bluetooth. Tim Apple. Groove, smashing. Yay, capitalism. <laughs> An armed man wearing a Canadian combat uniform was arrested in Ghana for impersonating a Canadian military officer. Police in the Democratic Republic of Congo have arrested Nimuanda Nasimi, the claimed prophet and leader of the separatist religious sect called Bundu Dia Congo. Bunda Dia Congo wants to form an ethnically Congo state out of parts of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. What? Republic of Congo. What? Angola what? and potentially Gabon. What? Bundu Dia Congo has been involved in multiple skirmishes with Congo police before. 14 members were killed by police during a demonstration in 2002. 134 members were killed in skirmishes with police in 2007. Oink, oink, pig, can you sing a song? In 2008, the government banned them, and then in 2017, BDK members broke their leader, Nim Muanda Nasimi, out of jail. This current arrest started with BDK protests being disrupted, with the police citing a ban on gatherings due to the coronavirus. Throughout April, and that happened in March. Throughout April, about 20 sect members and police were killed in three separate clashes on a highway. On April 24th, following heavy gunfire in the capital, Kinshasa, eight more people were killed, 35 injured, and 168 arrested, including the leader, Nemuanda Nasimi, again. Nasimi was taken to the hospital with a head injury before being handed over to prosecutors. Indian police in Kashmir booked a 26-year-old female photojournalist, Mazrat Zara, for involvement in, quote, anti-national activities on social media. 
Her crime was posting a photo of a Kashmiri woman whose husband was killed by Indian forces. The Srinagar Cyber Police Station accuses Masrat of quote, denting the image of law enforcing p- agencies and causing disaffection against the country, end quote. They almost seem to make up laws just for charging fines. Sergio Moro was the judge responsible for locking up Lula da Silva as a political prisoner in Brazil. Sergio Moro resigned as justice minister for the Bolsonaro administration Bolsonaro. because Bolsonaro fired the federal police's director general. The issue is, Sergio Moro is just as much of a corrupt bastard as Bolsonaro, Bolsonaro. but American media is already hyping Moro as a replacement to Bolsonaro. I read several articles that gloss over Moro's direct collaboration in imprisoning Lula and arguing that he's proved to the public he's anti-corruption. What do you mean? It seems like what a lot of U.S. press is trying to do is they realize Bolsonaro's kind of a dipshit and he's too much Trump-like, so they can't really convince the American, the general American public that he's good in a bipartisan way. Right now, the only Americans who like Bolsonaro are the same people who like Trump. I like them all. So what they need is someone like Sergio Moro to get a bipartisan consensus in the U.S. that the same exact far-right-wing oppressive government is good because they don't have a buffoon like Bolsonaro in the way. They have someone who's a little more... uh, presentable and refined like Sergio Moro. Liberals have really failed. After days of rumors and innu- innuendo from Western and Western-friendly press, Kim Jong-un was revealed to be alive when he was seen after a 20-day am- absence at the ribbon-cutting ceremony of a new manure factory. I'm back! Lawmakers on the House Judiciary Committee have called on Amazon founder Jeff Bezos Jeff Bozo to address potentially, quote, misleading and possibly criminally false or perjurious, end quote, statements the company made. They cited a story from the Wall Street Journal that claims Amazon routinely uses proprietary data from third-party sellers to create its own rival products. The social media video sharing app TikTok is considering launching a reality TV show. I baked you a pie. Oh boy, what flavor! Pie, pie, pie. Dad, I'm hungry. I'm hungry, I'm dad. Why did you name me this way? Why, why, why? Scientists discover frogs used to live in Antarctica before it became a frozen wasteland. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay! A prominent anti-union lobbyist named Rick Berman released a memo to his capitalist buddies that said, quote, This is the first time since the early 1980s where I sent significant interest by employees in collective action and third-party representation. End quote. Berman concludes his memo with, quote, The good news is that most unions do not have competent union organizing staff that are skilled in managing this opportunity. End quote. Let's prove them wrong, right? You know what, Mr. Bloomberg, it wasn't you who made all that money. Maybe your workers played some role in that as well. Harvard's Faculty of Arts and Sciences placed mathematics and biology professor Martin A. Novak on paid administrative leave after a report finds Epstein used his program to rehabilitate his image. Keep in mind, Martin Novak is a tenured professor, and it is a huge deal to put a tenured professor on leave like this. Elon Musk has denied that he meant to call a British cave diver a pedophile when he dubbed the guy Pedo Guy on social media. Finally, CNN released a video of Chris Cuomo emerging from his basement after coronavirus quarantine. All right, here it is. The official re-entry from the basement. 
cleared by CDC, a little sweaty. I can't sweat that cause I love the home. Just worked out, it happens. This is what I've been dreaming of. Wicked phantasmagorical experiences that are not dreams. Literally for weeks. A week's vacation. My wife, yeah, right. <laughs> She was cleared by the CDC. She doesn't have fever. She doesn't have the symptoms anymore. More than seven days from her quarantine. We're still a little scared, so I'll just give you one of these. 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 You one of these. You one of these. You one of these. Bella has, of course, taken the video. This is the dream. Just to be back up here doing normal things. I want to be where the people are. I want to see, want to see them dancing, walking around on those, what do you call them? Oh, feet. However, a police report from Easter Sunday shows that it's not true. It's a made-up tale. Chris Cuomo got into an argument with a guy biking by his house before he released this video. Here he comes. Here comes John Wayne. Cuomo himself corroborates this because he griped about the incident on the Howard Stern Show. Hey now. And that's that for the facts and logic.